At the end of last year, I went through one of the most painful experiences of my life. My mom died of pneumonia. She was my biggest cheerleader and she prayed for me constantly and now she's gone. And I was hurting big time. And when that happened, there were tons of people who sent me texts to let me know that they were praying for me. And all of that meant so much and I saved them all. But my small group did more than just send a text. They actually showed up. They showed up and they called us immediately. They showed up at our house. They brought meals. They were willing to do that for over a couple of weeks so that we didn't have to worry about cooking at all. And then they showed up for the funeral. And one of the women in our group showed up to organize an entire dinner for all of our family and friends. She knew my mom and how important it was for my mom not to just have a funeral, but a funeral. You see, my mom had a huge kind of personality. She was a cut up. She loved to have fun. And she didn't just want like a depressing kind of drab funeral. She wanted to have a funeral. So our friends in our small group put together a meal of baseball park foods. We had hot dogs and nachos and popcorn and pop and beer. We really didn't have beer. I just wanted to know if you were still with me, okay? But they had all kinds of stuff to just have fun like you do when you go to a baseball game and everyone's eating and enjoying and you watch the game, but you're also just connecting with one another. And there was this sense of our family really being able to uh, grieve what we needed to grieve, but also to celebrate my mom's life, to celebrate a funeral. Now again, there was one lady who organized it all, but there were other people in the group that donated food and time and money and helped put it all together. And even though it was very difficult for us as a family, it helped us know that my small group had our back. You know, last week we talked about how important a good foundation is for a small group. And one of the most important factors in a solid small group is when people actually show up for you. Now, Paul, uh, one of the closest followers of Jesus, who wrote more than half of the New Testament of the Bible, said this to his fellow believers, mourn with those who mourn, rejoice with those who rejoice. You see, Paul understood what it meant to do life together with people, to be with them and to be for them in the most pivotal moments in their lives. And small groups that truly make an impact, they show up for each other. So what does it look like to show up? If someone in the group is in the hospital, go visit them. Sit with them for a while. If someone is struggling, put your arm around them and allow them to cry on your shoulder and you cry with them. If their car breaks down, give them a ride. And if they're grieving, go to their house, give them some food, get some drinks, show them love. But you don't just show up when there are challenges. You also can show up in the good times too. When someone has a baby, you bring them gifts. When someone moves to a new place, you actually go and you help them move in. And if someone has a birthday, just crash their birthday party. <laughs> Not really. But what you want to do is actually show up for those important days because showing up is half the battle. You see, folks, be the kind of group that loves not just with words, but with actions, because that's the kind of small group that can make an impact for eternity. My friend Kent has been through some tough stuff in his life. Several years ago, the woman that he was engaged to be married to was diagnosed with cancer, and after a long battle and multiple treatments, she passed away. He was in the darkest season of his life. But do you know who showed up? His small group. And I invite you right now to listen to Kent's story. Well, I'm Kent Lane, and I've been coming to the JAR for, I believe this is into the third year now. Diane was my fiance, um, and our faith has always been with Jesus. Um, but I think as time passes, when you grow older and you know become into your adult adulthood, uh, jobs and 
alone time and recreation sometimes uh, or often trumps what we should have our our, our priorities set in and and uh, I, it was just a time where we both thought that maybe we should put Jesus back in the top of the list and make him our priority so we together returned to church and started our affiliation with the jar we really didn't know anything about small groups uh, I've heard of cell groups from other churches and my brother uh, but we didn't really know what they were all about Chester and Nikki were a part of a small group and they had an interview one Sunday and after hearing what they had went through and what we were about to endure I just thought it was the perfect time to become a part of a small group and, and have the same support that they did I'm going through their struggles and tough times Diane was my fiance and after we became part of the Coons a small group she was diagnosed with cancer and uh, you know the, the way that the, the group helped us they prayed with us, came to visit. They brought food on numerous occasions and they showed up at our treatments. They came to our house. More importantly, they were just there to, to help us and pray with us. It, it, it's, a, it's a different feeling to be surrounded by family and then surrounded by good Christian believers and help. They, they helped with, with things after Diane passed that I didn't think about. Uh, you know, getting a venue for after the funeral or after the celebration of life. And it wasn't just a few things that, that they did, you know, post the celebration of life. I, I felt like I had a group that if I needed anything, that, that they, they, they were there for me. They were about as close to me as anybody. They, they just made the, the big change a lot easier or as comfortable as it could be. You know, we're all gonna go through this stuff. Uh, but I couldn't imagine going through it without a small group.